Hi, my name is Isaac Grease, and I'm a, a junior studying biomedical and electrical engineering at CSU. Today I'm going to be looking at an audio backend system and applying the concepts I learned in ECE 311, 331, and 341 to it. This is the circuit for the audio backend system. It is made up of a DC voltage source, VB, a 5 kilo ohm resistor, a voltage source at the drain, VDD, and two NMOS transistors. <clears throat> at the output, a speaker is connected. I'll start by looking at the circuit and how, can we, how we can apply ECE 311 and 331 to the circuit. Then I'll look at the speaker and briefly explain how it works. Then finally, I'll apply the concepts I learned in 311, 331, and 341 to change a magnetic circuit into an electric circuit. <clears throat> then I'll use the resulting electric circuit to solve a magnetic circuit problem. <clears throat> Let's first look at the output of the system in terms of the magnitude and phase of the frequency response H of JW. If your Vn is equal to A cosine W naught T, then your output signal will be A magnitude of H of JW naught times the cosine of W naught T plus the phase of H of JW naught. For example, if we were to plug in a 10 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal into the input, our output would be about four times larger and will be phase shifted 180 degrees, or pi. As I in increase the peak-to-peak -peak signal at the input, the output becomes distorted and the DC component to the output changes, so it no longer represents a pure sinusoid. For this cadence graph, I used an input of 200 millivolts peak-to-peak -peak signal as you can see, at zero, the output signal is basically a flat line. This is due to harmonics from other frequencies coming into the signal. These harmonics were also present in the 10 millivolt peak-to-peak -peak signal, but they had such a small effect that they did not change the signal. <clears throat> As the input increased, these harmonics had a much larger effect on the output, causing the shape of the output to change. <clears throat> these harmonics show up in the output because this circuit is nonlinear. In a linear circuit, an input x of t will have an output y of t equals c1 x of t. But in a nonlinear circuit, an input x of t will have an output y of t equals c1 x of t plus c2 x squared of t, and so on. These additional terms, c2 x squared of t, etc., um, in introduce these harmonics into the sinusoidal signal, into the output signal. <clears throat> Now let's look at the small signal equivalent of the system and the voltage gain of the system. Let's first look at the system without the second transistor. If we take the small signal equivalent of this, we end up with the circuit on the top and the two equations to the right of the, of the uh, figure. Now if we add the speaker to the circuit, which has a very small resistance, we see why this second transistor is so necessary. Our equation for the output voltage will be V out equals A V in R L divided by R L plus R not R out. So without the second transistor, most of the voltage gain will be dropped across R out and very little will drop across our load. <clears throat> so now let's look at the small signal equivalent with the second transistor. Our result will be the circuit on the top and the two equations to the right of the figure. In this case, our output resistance is much smaller because 1 over GM2 is a very small value. Our equation for the output voltage will be the same as, in the, as it was in the previous circuit, but this time because R out is much smaller than RL, most of the voltage will drop across RL. <clears throat> now let's consider how the output load, the speaker, works. I found a few animated GIFs which show how a speaker works in detail with all the various components used in the speaker. But let's focus in the GIF I used on the t at the top, which simplifies the speaker into its three main components, <clears throat> the cone, the coil, and the magnet. The magnet is a permanent magnet that is made up of a hard material with a wide hysteresis curve, meaning that it is difficult to demagnetize and is easily able to hold its magnetization. This material could be iron, neodymium, or some other material. The coil, which is usually made up of copper, 
is a solenoid which creates a temporary electromagnetic when a current is run through it. When this coil becomes magnetized, it is attracted or repelled by the permanent magnet. As the coil moves, the cone, which is usually made up of plastic, um, paper, or a light metal, moves back and forth, sending vibrations or sound waves into the air. <clears throat> now let's look briefly at how we can apply the concepts used in ECE 311 and 331 to ECE 341. We are going to look at we are going to be looking at this nonlinear magnetic circuit with an HB curve, like in Figure 5. To apply concepts used in 311 and 331, we will convert this magnetic circuit into an electric circuit, and we will use an IV curve to solve for the operating region of the magnetic circuit. <clears throat> we convert the, the magnetic circuit into the electric circuit on the left, from which we obtain the equation epsilon equals V plus I R naught, with R naught equal to I naught over mu naught S. <clears throat> we change the VH curve into an IV curve using the idea that V equals HL and I equals BS. <clears throat> we use the values for H and B, where the magnetic circuit changes from linear to saturation to solve for I and V. These new I and V values become... <clears throat> become the area where the IV curve changes from linear to saturation. Then we plug in the current at saturation into the epsilon equation and solve for V. If the voltage found is not in the saturation region, then we plug in I equals mu naught V with mu naught as the slope of the linear portion. We have seen how important it is that the audio back end circuit have two resistors or it would not function very well as an amplifier and that this particular circuit has to have a fairly low input or the output will be severely distorted. This circuit as an, as an amplifier is very important in all of our electronics to, to provide us with loud audio.